in the dimly lit theater as the curtains drew back and the first flickers of light danced upon the screen. An enchanting journey began a rendezvous with the enigmatic world of Touch of Evil. Just like that inaugural sip of coffee that forever defines your taste for it, this 1958 cinematic masterpiece slipped into the corridors of your mind, embedding itself with an allure that time could never fade. Can you recall that first encounter, that moment when the black and white frame swept you away into a realm of intrigue, mystery, and palpable tension? Perhaps it was the haunting silhouette of Charlton Heston against the eerie backdrop of the U.S.-Mexico border town, a chiaroscuro of moral ambiguity, or the echoes of Orson Welles' commanding voice that resonated through the intricate labyrinth of the plot, leaving an indelible mark on your memory. Could it have been that unforgettable tracking shot, a single-take marvel that wandered through the gritty streets, pulling you into the very heart of corruption and deception? As time trickled on, did those moments linger? Did you find yourself reflecting on the intricate dance of characters, on the web of secrets and lies that wove itself around your senses? Perhaps the echoes of that resonant score by Henry Mancini serenaded your thoughts, a haunting melody that seemed to mirror the very essence of the tale. But enough of the reverie, let's delve into the fascinating tapestry of facts that cloak this cinematic gem. Did you know that the film's initial release saw a controversial edit, one that wrested control from the hands of its genius creator? And how about the brilliant casting choices that set the stage for an unparalleled ensemble performance, unraveling a tale that dared to question the very notions of good and evil? So, whether you're revisiting this timeless classic or embarking on your maiden voyage into its shadowy universe, remember that your first encounter with Touch of Evil is more than just a memory, it's a portal to a world of cinematic prowess and narrative finesse. And now, as we uncover the veils concealing the lesser-known facets of this production, always keep in mind that every frame holds a story of its own, waiting to be discovered. The 1958 film Touch of Evil, directed by Orson Welles, has left an indelible mark on cinema history with its complex narrative and intriguing production history. Wells, renowned for his unconventional approach, aimed to incite audience frustration, akin to Howard Hawks' The Big Sleep. However, studio interference compounded the intricacy of the plot. Wells intended to immerse viewers in a bewildering storyline. The film's setting, a fictional Mexican border town called Los Robles, belies its real-world origin, Venice, California. This unlikely choice stemmed from the desire to capture a genuine sense of decay and dilapidation. The atmosphere of Venice lent authenticity to the film's aesthetic. One of the most captivating chapters in the movie's history centers around the 1998 restoration. Anticipation mounted for its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival, but a last-minute cancellation by Beatrice Wells, daughter of Orson Wells, overshadowed the event. Known for obstructing presentations of her father's works through legal threats, Beatrice's actions added another layer of intrigue to the film's legacy. Touch of Evil continues to be celebrated for its audacious storytelling and the enigma of its production. Its ability to provoke and confound, a testament to Wells' vision, keeps audiences engaged even decades later. Orson Welles' cinematic triumph, unveiling the untold stories behind Touch of Evil in a poignant scene from the film Ed Wood. The character portraying Orson Welles laments the artistic compromises inflicted upon directors. The conversation delves into a historical incident tied to Welles' own creation, Touch of Evil. Aiming to preserve his vision, Welles transformed Charlton Heston's character from a Caucasian to a Mexican. This ingenious move was a defiant response to studio pressures, showcasing Wells' determination to safeguard his artistic integrity. The set of Touch of Evil was fraught with intrigue. Aware of studio surveillance, Wells orchestrated his shooting schedule shrewdly. He initiated with simple close-ups to deceive prying eyes. The first two shots were swiftly completed by 9.25 a.m., prompting the studio spies to withdraw, blissfully unaware. However, Wells ingeniously concealed an extended 11-page take, not wrapping until 7.40 p.m. The strategic maneuver allowed him to conclude the day ahead of schedule, outwitting the very forces that sought to curb his creativity. A symphony of digetic sounds envelops Touch of Evil. Orson Welles defied convention by weaving in music from sources within the film's universe. Radio broadcasts, jukeboxes, and player pianos serve as melodic threads connecting the narrative's fabric. 
This audacious auditory choice underscores Wells' masterful manipulation of every cinematic element to construct an immersive and captivating viewing experience. Touch of Evil, a film that transcends its era, offers more than its on-screen allure. It embodies Wells' resilience against meddling, showcases his strategic genius, and amplifies his commitment to crafting an all-encompassing artistic vision. As the cinematic world evolves, this classic stands as a testament to the eternal struggle between creative minds and the forces that seek to stifle them. Amidst the cinematic landscape of 1958, Orson Welles' Touch of Evil emerged as a captivating noir masterpiece that continues to intrigue audiences today. However, the film's journey to the silver screen was far from straightforward. Following an initial edit, Wells embarked on another creative venture in Mexico, only to return to an unexpected twist. The studio had taken the reins, radically recutting the film out of commercial concerns. This artistic intrusion sparked debates about creative control in Hollywood. In a surprising convergence of star power, Marlene Dietrich and Zaza Gabor graced the film's credits, albeit in contrasting capacities. Sharing a title card that read guest starring Marlene Dietrich, Zaza Gabor, the two actresses lent their aura to the production. Gabor's fleeting on-screen presence, a mere 20 seconds, might have seemed a passing nod, while Dietrich's larger role spanned four pivotal scenes, including a climactic finale. This intriguing casting choice added a layer of allure to the movie's enigmatic atmosphere. The tug of war between artistic vision and studio interference took another twist when Touch of Evil found itself entangled in the Brussels World's Fair. Orson Welles' audacity shone as he dared to challenge Universal's reluctance to screen the film at the fair. The head of distribution, harboring unwavering faith in the film's potency, clandestinely submitted it for consideration. The result, an unexpected triumph, as the film clinched the top prize, leaving the studio both awestruck and bereft of their distribution chief. Touch of Evil stands as a testament to the complexities of Hollywood's creative and commercial interplay. Wells' narrative, intertwined with the capriciousness of fate, solidified the film's place in cinematic history as a provocative masterpiece that dared to challenge the norm. Engaging, evocative, and resonant, Touch of Evil captures not only the essence of a suspenseful noir thriller, but also the indomitable spirit of its creator, and the stars who illuminated its shadows. Unveiling the behind-the-scenes intrigue of Orson Welles' 1958 masterpiece, Touch of Evil in the Annals of Cinematic History. Few films have left an indelible mark quite like Orson Welles' noir classic, Touch of Evil, which continues to captivate audiences with its labyrinthine plot and atmospheric intensity. Behind the scenes, a tapestry of intriguing anecdotes weaves the story of its creation, none more fascinating than the sartorial journey of Charlton Heston who portrayed the film's protagonist, Ramon Miguel Vargas. Director Orson Welles, renowned for his meticulous attention to detail, spared no effort to ensure authenticity. Heston's wardrobe, embodying the essence of a Mexican lawman, was no exception. Wells, ever the perfectionist, turned to a distinguished tailor in Mexico City, the very craftsman responsible for the impeccable suits of Mexico's elite officials. Heston, in character as the tenacious narcotics investigator, donned attire that resonated not only with the role but also with the nation's dignitaries. Another bizarre yet pivotal behind-the-scenes account revolves around Akim Tamiroff, who brought to life the character Uncle Joe Grandy. The character's grotesque death scene demanded an unsettling visual a criminal strangled so ruthlessly that his tongue protruded grotesquely. Wells, a director known for pushing boundaries, opted for a chillingly realistic effect. Tamaroff was tasked with inserting a lamb's tongue into his own mouth. Yet, fate intervened, the disturbing image proved too much for the silver screen, and Tamaroff's commitment remained unseen, a forgotten ordeal. However, the intrigue doesn't end there. The enigmatic Marlene Dietrich, embodiment of femme fatale, emerged as a testament to Wells' creative genius. In a surprise twist, he penned Dietrich's role after filming commenced. With characteristic audacity, he extended the offer the night before filming, cementing her place in the narrative mosaic. Dietrich's presence, an 11th hour edition, enriched the film's texture and showcased Wells' unparalleled ability to harness serendipity. As Touch of Evil stands the test of time, its behind-the-scenes tales offer a glimpse into the mind of a cinematic virtuoso. 
The precision of Heston's wardrobe, the macabre dedication of Tamaroff, and the impromptu inclusion of Dietrich underscore the intricate layers that make this film a true masterpiece and indubitable triumph in the Walesian canon. As the curtains draw to a close on this cinematic journey, we find ourselves tethered to the enigmatic allure of Touch of Evil, a timeless masterpiece that continues to echo through the corridors of our minds. As you navigate the labyrinthine depths of its intricate plot and characters, perhaps you've discovered a mirror to your own emotions and experiences, a reflection that bridges the decades and invites introspection. The haunting shadows of the dimly lit streets, the seductive dance of light and darkness, they whisper secrets that resonate deep within us. Every frame, every line of dialogue, every fleeting expression serves as a vessel, transporting you to a place where time loses its grip and the boundaries between reality and fiction blur. It's an invitation to traverse your own memories and emotions, to ponder the universal themes that have endured since that fateful year of 1958. As we reluctantly bid adieu to this cinematic gem, we implore you to share your personal connection with Touch of Evil. How did it find its way into your heart? Did it spark conversations, provoke contemplation, or stir dormant emotions? Your insights are the threads that weave the tapestry of this film's enduring legacy. In the quiet moments when the echoes of the film's haunting score linger, and the imagery still dances behind closed eyes. Take a moment to pen down your thoughts. Share with us your favorite memories, the scenes that linger like the taste of bittersweet memories on your tongue. Let your voice become a part of the larger narrative that this film has crafted over the years. Thank you, dear reader, viewer, for embarking on this cinematic exploration with us. Your time and curiosity are deeply appreciated as we continue to unravel the enigma that is Touch of Evil. And as you reflect on its impact on your own life, remember that your connection with this classic is a testament to the timelessness of great art. So, whether you whisper your reflections to the wind or type them into the digital abyss, know that your words matter. Your thoughts enrich the collective experience, and your memories become a cherished part of the legacy that Touch of Evil has woven. Until next time, may the allure of cinema's magic continue to guide your journey. Fondly,